Okay, your spine um, in flexible mode is ready. Uh, so you can see here the armature. There's one for every single vertebrae for the segment of the spine. The, the individual spine segmentation wasn't great, I'll admit that. I just had to do it quickly um, to get a proof of concept out. Um, the discs I've designed in another in another file, but I just didn't need it for the, for this one. I've even even labeled them uh, according to number. So the idea here is that if you did want to move each vertebrae uh, individually, you can grab it and you can cause this to happen or this to happen. It's a little bit insane, and if you ever wanted to pose this, uh, it'd be a total pain to have to go through each and every single one of these things and then um, move them all individually. So you can go through the weight painting thing and you can make it kind of seem more mechanical by giving um, by giving values that are either on or off completely. So let's see what it looks like. So sort of like this. Uh, this is all automatic by the way, but you can do this for each and every single one of them, but it's not great because you still get some really strange deformations plus it doesn't really stop you from uh, it doesn't help the fact that you'd still have to pose each and every single one of these um, by themselves in pose mode so that you know you can see what your spine actually looks like uh, instead what I've done is I've put inverse kinematics into this which basically allows one bone to act as a control so for mine I've chosen the top one to simulate kind of what the neck does so if in case um, you're slouching at the shoulders or you brought your head down a little bit or something. Uh, so if you select this one, in this case it's called Bone 7, uh, you just hit G, and if you compress, as you can see, the spine moves realistically. All the spine segments move. Um, I think it's better seen in this bottom right-hand window over here. You can follow the outline. And it's maxed so that um, I, I can't actually pull it any further up than this and I can't pull it any further down, just like uh, you'd expect a normal spine. Is this accurate? Yeah, probably. Or it's close to, anyway. And uh, here's the front view. So you can see it there. Uh, the other thing I've added is a little pivot bone. So obviously when you're twisting your body, your spine's going to follow. This one is... it's not great, actually. They're both linked to the same bone, but you don't... they don't get the same level of um, realistic twist with this one. As you can see, the entire spine moves. I'm not super happy about that. Uh, to get over that, I've actually just been moving uh, each of these bones individually. But in case you just wanted to do a little bit of a compression demo, you could just do this. And it's it's pretty good. And like the, the, the spine moves as you would expect it to. And no crazy deformations happen. And uh, you don't get the insane warping that I used to get here. Like... Um, the process would actually start bending all over the place as if it was made out of rubber. But now I've fixed some settings, I've turned def deformations off and uh, some axes so you don't get that happening. And all you get is this nice rocking back and forth. Uh, what does it actually look like at the facets? I didn't do a very good job with the facets, but that's not super bad, I don't think. Okay. Um, Next step, uh, let's get rid of that. So now that they're hidden, and I've animated it. So let's zoom out. And you can see what the deformation looks like in all these views. Play. There we go. It's just running super slowly right now because I'm trying to motion capture my screen and um, uh, I haven't rendered this. This is just happening inside Blender itself. So if you if you wanted to render this and use it in a web player, sure. Uh, and we can just play with the spine now because it's the deformation is pretty accurate for what I can do for the moment. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the basis of your flexible spine, at least this version.